moving to LA, I, my previous job, I had already been there for 12 years. So I kind of was trying to enjoy 12 like 12 years. 12 years. I've never worked for 12. Yes. <laughs> no, same. That's that's what I'm see? saying. You know, so that's So when I'm, he talks about dinosaurs, you know it's real. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so it's like. This is a living uh, I, fossil. Yes. You look like, like you. you've only worked two years. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. Fuck you, though. Yeah. I'm saying that. <laughs> Good guys, it's your boy Corey. It's your boy John. And welcome back to the Artistry Drop where we feature stories from today's rising artists. Guys, we're gonna dive right in. Our guest today is a multidisciplinary creative. She was previously a creative content producer for Live Nation and currently a graphic designer for Fashion Nova, which is big. So guys, please welcome Sydney Salvador. Hey. Let's go, Let's Sydney. Go. Welcome to the Artistry Drop. It's been a minute since I've seen you. It, I think it was way like before the pandemic. Before yeah. the pandemic. I think we were. Mm-hmm. I think the last time I actually saw you was when we were shooting with Scotty. Oh my yeah. god! That was the yes, your dog. Yes. That was the last time. And uh, how is your dog actually doing? He's good. He's actually turning nine. I want to say this okay. year. And I got his balls removed oh, like, oh, a couple perfect. months ago, and I yeah. feel so bad, but yeah. he's thriving. Yeah. That's what kind of dog? Cute. Scottish Terrier. Sc- yeah. Okay. He, he's Scotty a- McGregor, the Scottish yeah. Terrier. Yeah, 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 he's a cool. big one too, but he's oh, he he's so cute. Like mm-hmm. he he's he's funny because uh, when when um a dog company reached out to me, they uh-huh. were like, we need to do dog content. Oh, I, shit. I had no idea like who owned a dog. Of course, I didn't have Lucky down here, right, so right. I couldn't do that content. I was like, oh, Sid has a dog. I was like, uh-huh. so I reach out to her. This dog company like wants to shoot content. So I was oh, like, shit. are you down to let Scotty be like a face of it? Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, of course. So we went down to Venice Beach. Uh, we shot some photos of uh, Scotty uh-huh. and he was going crazy. I mean, it was my one of my first times to like shoot dog An animal. photography. Yeah, yeah, animals or dog photography. But I mean, it, you always shot Lucky, but I, I it wasn't tried. like it, real, yeah, it, it, you know, real it's, shoot. It's so hard to shoot with like pets and oh, stuff yeah, yeah. like that. And you know, even with Lucky, holding a ball up yeah. isn't enough because yeah. he's going to keep looking away. It's hard and... for them to stay still. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Scotty yeah. did a pretty good job. Cause did I mean, si- Yeah, since you oh, were there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, since you were there and then, you know, we got shots of you mm-hmm. with Scotty yeah. aside from shots of just Scotty. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I think it worked out. They loved uh-huh. the shots as well. I honestly never kept up with what the they brand. were. Yeah, what they were actually doing. So I yeah. don't know where they are now. But yeah. hey, I mean, it good worked. To, yeah, yeah, it worked yeah. and good to see you. You know, it's yeah, been nice a, it's you. been a couple years, <laughs> which is crazy. You know, yeah. so you know, hopefully you're doing good since the pandemic has you know happened. But yeah, we're gonna get to know a little bit more about Sydney, guys. But yes, first, sir. let's get into the drink of the day. The drink of the day is the infamous mango nada from the Hispanic community. Um, so yeah, of course, it's with tequila. I made my own twist, like I do with every drink. Uh, I put some mango puree, uh, blended it with some frozen mango chunks as well, put some lime juice in there, and then uh, I put some chamoy on top with some tahini, and then I topped it off with some frozen mangoes as well, and put a little palm trees and a neon <laughs> straw to set the vibe. It looks fire, and I'm glad yeah. you added a straw this time because the last episode you didn't add a straw. Yeah, um, yeah so the last episode. It made it a little difficult. It, it did, it yes, did. Yeah, yes. but I like making things difficult oh you know? no that's fucked he, up he's uh man. my grandpa i call him my grandpa he's a little bit older so, he, so sometimes you got to challenge him you he's know? the grandpa yeah yeah he's the grandpa that's uh, that's our inside joke yeah, that's the inside oh. joke yeah, yeah. but hey let's go ahead and take our our cheers our toast for today's wow. episode i got my napkin attached cheers, to it. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Here, i'll give that back to you thank you sid appreciate it let's taste i'm this. so excited for this oh yeah solid oh that is good yeah Damn, I can I taste it. I feel like it. I'm on vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I I officially feel like I'm gonna be messed up on this episode. Oh yeah, because you know? I put a lot. Because normally when you do, I put a lot. <laughs> normally <laughs> when you put blended uh, drinks like margaritas I've made before, like you don't really feel the alcohol like you would with something that's on the rocks. Mm-hmm. So this one I went a little. This is like heavy. super blended. Super blended, but I also added a little bit more. <laughs> But I don't know what this between man's is three. trying to do, but you know, like uh, you're, you're trying to fuck me up on uh, this podcast. You want to know how many shots? Uh, I mean, you might as oh, well. You, t- you want to you want to know like at the end? I mean, you when might as well tell me now. I want to know so, now. Okay. Yeah. See, she wants to know. I now. put seven shots. 
In mine, an and hour. ours, it is like all total. 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 You're total. Okay, like, seven I, shots I, split between the she's three. Good. She won't even be able to mm. bike. Because normal, normally I put like five. <laughs> if you need to take it easy, take it easy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> okay, she can hang. She can hang. Because normally if I put like about four or five, but you don't even taste the alcohol, so this time you know yeah. went a little heavier. But I'm pretty sure it's, it's not gonna hit us as hard as you think. I mean, we took two shots. That, yeah, that's that's Sid took her separately. first shot earlier. Yeah. So I mean, that's yeah, that's it might hit you now. It might hit us and yeah. Good luck. <laughs> we'll see how today goes, but this guys, is gonna be a good podcast. It will. So <laughs> yeah. I want to dive in, and you know, I want you guys to get to know Sydney. So Sydney, are you originally from LA? I'm originally from LA. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was born in the Valley, San Fernando Valley, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I moved to Santa Clarita. Mm -hmm. But I guess. To an outsider, that's all LA. But yeah. then to people in LA, they're like, "That's not LA." LA okay. County. LA County. I mean, it makes sense. So I'm from LA. Yeah. yeah, I've always had family out here, mm -hmm. so I like to say I'm from LA. Yeah, hey, yeah. that's dope. That's dope. Um, can you put your mic a little bit closer? <laughs> to me? Yeah, just pull, Do it, pull I move it closer it? to you. Yeah, yeah just yeah. move it yeah, towards yeah. you and point it towards yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm not. Before we get no, too good. far in, to uh, turn the microphone. Yeah. The, on the, the bottom one. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Turn it, turn it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, she was great. Is that too that's, close now? No, that's yeah, perfect. No, that's perfect. That's good. Perfect. That's good. perfect. So uh, at least okay. you're more relaxed, you know? Exactly. Yes. You can chill. You can can chill. I move my drink closer? Uh, well, you can if you want to. <laughs> move the or should I too. move closer? <laughs> yeah, you should move closer for sure. There you go. There you go. There we go. Let's go. You're good. All right, we're coming now. There we go. Now we're talking. Going back to you, like, so what's your ethnicity? I'm Filipino. Filipino? Do hey. I not look Filipino? <laughs> hey, you never know these days. I look Filipino. You look but, Filipino. But I'm not but Filipino. But he's not. You're not Filipino. No, I'm yeah. Lao and uh, Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. wow. But I grew up, when in Seattle, there's so many Filipinos out there. So I grew up with that culture. Um, you know, meeting him and uh, being in high school with so many other Filipinos. I actually know more Tagalog than my own language. It's yeah. Oh, crazy. really? Yeah. You probably know more than I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so That's okay. uh, growing up, like, did your parents not speak Tagalog to you or? It was actually really interesting because both my parents, they, my, I guess like my mom's side, they're Ilocano. Oh, okay. And oh, then, okay. yeah, and then my dad's side, my grandma, no, my grandpa, he speaks Tagalog, but then my grandma, I don't, Visaya, Visaya? Visaya. Yeah, oh, yeah. She was from there and mm. they both came to the U.S. My grandparents mm -hmm. both came to the U.S. And they didn't know each other, but the only language that they could speak to each other was English. Mm -hmm. So my dad, I guess my grandma had to learn Tagalog, but they never really spoke it. Like my dad never learned how to say anything. Mm -hmm. He can understand it. Oh. But so, yeah. okay, so that's, that's my reasoning. I no, don't know that, that what that makes, is, but. Yeah, that's kind of no, like him. <laughs> no, that makes sense though. The yeah. fact that like your parents didn't really speak Tagalog as well and mm -hmm. didn't pass it off to you. I mean, you know, I, I think that's usually how majority of the time, you know, the next generation learns it is from your parents, right? Yeah. But I mean, for me, you know, since I'm half, it's like my dad was the one that needed to teach me, but he, you know, he never taught me. So mm -hmm. I only know English. But of course, you know, growing up, hearing my dad speak, because of course, you know, he, he grew up in the Philippines, kind of learned, uh, not learned, but he already grew up with the uh, Tagalog, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he just never passed it on to me. I don't know why. Uh, but I think my cousins even, they understand it. So my, mm -hmm. my cousins understand it, which you know, means my uncle and my aunt taught them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was never fortunate enough to actually learn Tagalog, mm -hmm. but it's like, I know the cuss words, <laughs> of which is important. So it's like, so funny. It, it's, it's important. important to any language. It is. I, it is. I know so many Spanish cuss yeah. words, you yeah. know, um, Lao cuss words mm -hmm. and stuff like that. For me, when it comes to like speaking Lao, my, my fam, my parents spoke Lao and my mom spoke mostly English, but mm -hmm. I feel like my situation is a little bit rare because my mom only spoke uh, Lao when she didn't want the kids to know. Oh. So like oh. when it came to the grown up talk yeah. of like gossiping, yeah. you know, they would speak Lao so the kids wouldn't know. Yeah. So that was the language barrier that I had. She never really taught me. And even though I asked so many times, she never really taught me because she didn't want me to know <laughs> what my aunts and uncles oh, were talking about. The so, gossip. Yeah, yeah. So. It's a little toxic. I, I think it would be weird to actually see your mom speak loud because just knowing your mom for a long time oh, yeah. and I only see her speak English. Right. Like if she just pops off with like speaking loud, I'll be uh -huh. like, oh fuck. Like, <laughs> she's that upset. She's angry. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, but right. even, you know, like going back to, you know, like one of our older friends uh -huh. where, you know, we were chilling in the room and all of a sudden he started speaking his language oh, or yeah. like, 
what the fuck? We've never <laughs> heard you speak this. Yeah. I think I, it, it would probably almost be the same with your yeah, mom. Yeah, it which, is, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. So I think it's always crazy when, like, you're a sp- specific ethnicity mm-hmm. and you don't know that specific person speaks it, but yeah. once you hear it, it's like, what Whoa. the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, and then you <laughs> you're get a whole into, different person. Yeah, you're a whole different yeah. person to him. So <laughs> yeah. No. I feel that's how it would be. Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, so, gro- of course, we know you're from L.A. So growing up, what was it like growing up in L.A., uh, being in a city where, you know, there's so many creatives, content creators? How was it for you? Um, Honestly, you know, growing up, a lot of my friends weren't, like, that I can think of. A lot of my friends weren't creative like me. Mm-hmm. I want to say they were more, you know, like they knew a lot of numbers or, mm-hmm. like, I know, that type of stuff. I felt like I was the only one that really was, like, interested in you know, graphic design or like photography or video. Actually, I'm lying, I take that back. I knew mm. I knew people, mm-hmm. I knew people, but it didn't really, you know, we never really connected about it until we got older. Uh, so I guess like, I guess, yeah. you know, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, it was only until after college that I was like, oh, like I can connect with this person a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, being in LA and growing up around the, like the person that had the most influence to me about creativity was my dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And so, I don't know if I've told you guys this story before. I feel mm-hmm. like I've told people. But like my dad, growing up, he was a graphic designer. Oh, and okay. so okay. the reason why I think I was strongly influenced by him was because as like a little baby, uh-huh. like growing up, I would sit in his like chair as mm-hmm. he was sitting at the computer, yeah. like uh-huh. behind him, peeking over, and he was just like on Photoshop, like yeah, designing okay. skateboards and mm-hmm. like wayboards. And yeah. I was just like, <gasps> Like as a kid, and like when he'd get up to go to the bathroom, he'd be like, "Here, you can play around." And like mm-hmm. I, so I started to figure things out like super early on. Yeah. And then I didn't really know that I wanted to do that as a mm-hmm. career until like I got to college, and I was like, "Oh shit, my my grades are really bad. I need mm-hmm. to figure something out." Yeah, and I was oh, so shit. good at it, uh-huh. and I was like, yeah. "Oh wow!" But I know it's it's been really interesting. You know, I like I said, mm-hmm. like I didn't really meet a lot of creative creative people until yeah. I got older mm-hmm. okay. um, but as soon as I met them I was like oh wow like these are the people I need to be around like yeah. these are mm-hmm. people influencing me to be mm-hmm. a better person yeah. in the ways that I want to be a better person so that's it's, it's been beneficial no, being that in LA for sure so, so you're saying like some of the people that you were friends with as a kid that you didn't think were like creators or cre- in the creativity space you linked up later or yeah so mm. oh, okay. so it's been really interesting because you know when you're as a kid mm-hmm. the only thing you think about is like oh what are we going to go do at pe what yeah. are we having for lunch right. like where are we going to meet our friends at during like recess or mm-hmm. whatever like you right. don't think about what you want to be yeah. in the right. future mm-hmm. so and i and like i think back and i'm like i did have a lot of friends a few friends that were like photographers back Mm -hmm. then where you know as I got older I really like reached out to them as like people like oh how do I do this and how do I do that so um yeah like it's it's been really nice to you know learn from these people that I met and yeah no that is dope because yeah like you know Mm -hmm. even for me like growing up as a child or whatever in Seattle I've never stayed connected to anybody that I knew as a child. You know, um, I, I would say there's probably a couple I known from like Facebook and stuff like that, but they're not in the creative space. Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody that I actually went to school with as a child is in the creative space. They're all either in medical field, you know, uh, being a lawyer or, you know, sure. something like that, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. So I feel like yeah. even for me growing up as a child, I was the only one related to, you know, art mm-hmm. because... Uh, so I, if I remember it was like fourth grade, right? Um, Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, no, like so, 10 centuries ago. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. So, uh, fourth grade, you know, I really got into drawing and, um, I'm drawing was something, something I really loved doing as a kid. You know, what I would do is just look at, you know, I would copy something, not trace. Mm-hmm. I would literally copy look something. At it yeah, look at it and try to replicate and, it. And, yeah, ex- mm-hmm. try to replicate That's it. That's so hard, by it the is. way. It is. It is. Yeah. It's hard. Now that I think about it as a kid, it's like, so I would say I was good at that shit when I was a kid, but if I was to do it now, I'm like, nah. <laughs> that, that shit was good when I was growing up already, mm-hmm. but now it's like I'm at a different point with art. Mm-hmm. It just wouldn't work for me. Um, but, you know, going back to, you know, growing up as a kid and replicating art or whatever I see I think I started off with drawing dinosaurs and Aww. um yeah so it was crazy so starting off uh drawing dinosaurs and then some of my teachers saw like what I could do they were like oh wow this is 
crazy. Like, you're really good at what you do. So, and then I think they reached out to some kind of, oh, no, no. It, so, what it was, it was like an art competition. Um, I think, I think Rachel, my girlfriend, uh, I think she actually had seen a video of it. But what it was, it was an art competition. And whoever does the best art is able to tr- uh, ride in a limo and go to McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I uh, wow, field trip to McDonald's. Yeah. 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 So that's what it was. Um. And yeah. So I I actually won it. It was me and one other girl, uh, that had won it. And yeah, it was a limo. You go to McDonald's and you get whatever you want. You know. Wow. So that's how your love for McDonald's started. <laughs> oh, <laughs> At man. a young age. <laughs> no, but honestly, it, it it was so dope that they no, had that. No, it is for yes, sure. That's that cool. Ha- yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's, you know that they had that kind of yeah. That they had, uh, they had that kind of shit going on, you know. Yeah. And um, I think honestly, that's probably what for me, uh, where it started as being an artist mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. You know, like drawing first, and then now, you know, where I'm at with photography and videography and filmmaking and stuff. That's where it started off. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's crazy, like finding finding passion what you, when your you're passion kid, when you're a yeah. kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, another thing like you brought up, like I feel like that's. You know, I've talked about this Mm -hmm. or we've talked about this before, but it's like, of course, you can't force your kid to love what you want to do. Definitely. But Mm -hmm. I think what your dad did was kind of, you know, sit you by his side, see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that strategy upon myself when I have kids and be like, Watch me video edit. <laughs> no, watch me edit photos. Look at all the cool so things boring. that I'm doing. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, so mm-hmm. that's actually a good strategy. It was like, you know, I've, t- I've told him this mm-hmm. too, and I've told her this. I was like, I would love for my kids to grow up being in the art field. You of know, of yeah. course, it's whatever they want to do. You know, it, it's up to them. But it's like when you are the one that produces them mm-hmm. and you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> producing like a video. Them, producing kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. It's yeah. true. It so sounds like, like you're ready. I, I, I mean, oh, oh, I, oh shit. I kind of oh, am. Shit. I, I kind of am. Grandpa's you know? ready. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I, I, Grandpa. I, I am. But, yeah. you know, like, honestly, like, I, I've always thought it in, uh, in that perspective. It's like, yeah. I want to raise them kind of like with what mm-hmm. I do. You've you been know? thinking about this for a while. I have been. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Lolo's been ready. <laughs> Lolo's ready. Lolo's ready. No, but uh, like I said, so it's really, mm-hmm. you know, just going back to that fact, like it's really dope how you got into it just from, you know, sitting by your dad and seeing yeah. exactly what he does. So yeah, yeah. that inspires me to do the same exact thing. Yeah, okay. I think I think like as a kid, you know, like he never really like forced me. Mm-hmm. It was just more I was nosy and yeah. I was curious. Yeah. Right. And I think like when you're as a kid, like kind of what you were saying, it was easy for you to draw dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. It was easy for me to pick up on things like yeah. as a kid. Mm-hmm. But now like, you know, now we have to see it as like a, a form of like how to live and yeah. you know make money and do all that stuff and now you're like you feel that pressure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is why i kind of feel like you know like you can't draw draw a dinosaur anymore yeah. you know right, yeah. right. no really i mean honestly that's true like i've thought about it in that way too you know like i don't want to put my you know my future kid in a position where it's like i'm forcing you to be an artist just right. because this is this is the shit i do right. mm-hmm. it's just it would be so dope to pass on to have it in yeah, common exactly and, right. you know sure, and yeah. yeah passing it on and seeing your kid thrive with what you were doing or are doing yeah. still you know pass so, on the legacy yeah pass on the legacy so mm-hmm. you know would love to see that just like what happened with you yeah. yeah we'll see um so you know going back to your story Scrolling through your Instagram and you know I, I we had <laughs> I've gone I, through a lot of, of course, changes. This, yeah. was, this is the first time I've actually scrolled through your Instagram. Really? So yeah. yeah. Oh wow. So you know I, like, I, I all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. I, I went through a lot of phases. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you did. So yeah. I mean, you know, reaching the bottom, you know, I could already tell you were definitely into like photography and art. Um, so how did you actually get to the point where you wanted to do photography? Because, you know, I saw you taking landscape photos mm-hmm. or photos of just random stuff. Like, of course, we like you mentioned, you were really into graphic design or mm-hmm. what you're that. But how yeah. did you transition into, into photography? photography? Yeah, I think it, it kind of happened around the same time. I like I was always really interested just in photography, mm-hmm. video, you know, like yeah. anything that had to do with camera. I also was interested in writing and like doing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember being as a like as a kid, my mom would always take pictures of me, mm-hmm. and then it mm-hmm. kind of turned into I want to take pictures of people as a kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And I remember taking my very first photography class. I think I was, I don't know, maybe third grade. Mm-hmm. They oh, had really? it at our school for like a summer class. That's so dope. Yeah, yeah it was so dope. dope. I never and had so, that. 
Yeah, I know, right? Missing out. You missed out. Yeah. I didn't have that until like high school. Yeah. Yeah. Elementary. Yeah. 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 Facts, facts, facts. That's and LA for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was really nice. And I like the very first thing I remember being in like third grade was like rule of thirds. You know, that mm. was like the thing. Mm-hmm. And so, and then I, you know, like they also touched on a Photoshop a little bit. And mm. I felt like I was at advantage because I was like, oh, I've seen this before. Right. And I think it was just a progressive thing where. I like when I learned one thing, it led me to another thing. And so right. when I got into high school, you know, I really wanted a camera. And then I was always just taking pictures of like landscape, people, you know, and just kept growing and growing and growing. Yeah, right. That I've always had it in the back of my head like, oh, I want to be a photographer. Like, mm-hmm. that's not just a graphic designer or anything like that. Like, I want to be able to do that as well. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like, I'm saying like a lot. I'm oh, sorry. No, you're no, good. No, you're, 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 say what you want. We say like a lot that's too. That's what the Furniture yeah. Drop is all about. Yeah. So it's, we, uh, speak we just it. want you to be yourself. Yeah, that's exactly. That's, that's speak it. on it. Yeah. Speak on it. Um, I think it was very like, you know, I manifested it. Mm-hmm. And, you, okay. and I think around the time that I met you, yeah. I was at a job that, mm-hmm. I don't know if I was still at that job or I had just come Live out Nation? of that job. No, it was before that. Okay, I only knew, oh, okay. knew you when, when I was you at, at Live Nation. Nation. Okay, yeah. so this was like shortly before. I was at a previous job mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. it was my first job out of college and it was stressful. And mm-hmm. I think with anybody, a, a job out of college was, yeah. is very stressful. Of course, right. Yeah. And I went through these periods of like, of like, oh, what am I doing with my life? Who am I? Like, is this what I really want to do? Mm-hmm. And I knew, you know, I knew there were other things that I did want to do, which was photo and yeah. video and like producing, styling even, you know. And so I remember getting a concussion. That's a whole other story. Oh. <laughs> and then like sitting there for a week thinking like, I could do better with my life. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many goals I want to achieve. Like, like I just need to, you know, move forward. I need to do mm-hmm. things with my life. And I remember I went on vacation after my concussion, came back, and then mm-hmm. I quit my job. And then I was like, I'm gonna buy myself a camera. I'm gonna start shooting and doing the things that I do love to do. Mm-hmm. So I started shooting some of my friends. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, somebody hit me up and they're like, Hey, like we have this like opportunity. You might be good at it. You might be interested. And it was kind of one of the things where you fake it till you make it. I yeah. started calling myself mm-hmm. a photographer, yeah. a video. Like, I do this, I do that. Mm-hmm. Which, in a sense, I did. You know, yeah. like, I was already editing videos. Mm-hmm. Like, I was already editing photos, taking photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wanted to get paid for it. Yeah, of course. And then, you know, things happened one thing after another. And then I got into the position that I was. And yeah. I was, yeah. Hey. Here no, we know, are. Hey, yeah, here we yeah. are. I mean, you know, you're lucky to the point because, of course, you grew up in a place where there's so many creatives here mm-hmm. and right. um you know back home in seattle we don't have that kind of shit so you know i started taking photos back in 2015 and no but i mean people would it, i put all my work on instagram people would follow but it was not to the point where it was like oh you know we have this position opening and you, you know sure. stuff mm-hmm. like that it, it's like the it's, opportunities yeah the opportunities yeah when you live in Seattle are like really Mm -hmm. reduced, like you just don't have it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I still took the opportunity because when I, you know, kind of like what you said, you know, you picked up a camera, started taking photos. That was just like me, you know, but of course for me, it was, I was already going to film school. So, you know, I already had the camera, but the thing that kind of transitioned me into shooting photos was, um, filmmaking so i was already shooting music videos for you know art local artists Mm -hmm. but the thing is they had all kind of moved on they some of them moved to la already uh some of them kind of got out of music so i was like damn like what am i gonna do now like this leaves me by myself so it got to the point you know where i was like you know what let me uh you know utilize my camera let me hit up some friends like you did, you know, and take their portraits yeah. and stuff, you know. So I started hitting up my close friends. I hit up him. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, too, he was never in photography at all. Yeah. He was just dancing and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But you Just know, dancing. I, just yeah. dancing. That's, that's his you know, male stripper. <laughs> you know, professional male stripper. Oh, no. Uh, like my Mike type of shit. You know, I'm mean, out here. No. It is what if it, it works is. for you. Yeah. If it works for you. you pay the bills. No. <laughs> shit. No, no, it, was, it was not like that. Yeah, but. no, like he's a hit pop dancer yeah. and stuff like that so you know but yeah like during that time you know i had like my closest friends i'd be like hey you know i'm starting to shoot photos like can i take your photo yeah and then you know i hit up him and you know a couple of our a uh, couple of our closer friends and uh you know they let me take their portraits and stuff and i was like damn this shit is actually pretty fun you know i've never like beforehand 
uh, filmmaking was the way to go for me. Mm-hmm. I love shooting videos. I mm-hmm. love editing videos because that was something I did like starting in 2008, 2009. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and then going into photography, I was like, nah, I hate photography. You know, like I would never do this shit. But and then the fact that when I was doing something and a lot of, you know, I was pretty much bailed on because people left. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, what am I going to do now? Like I'm, I'm, you know, a I midlife ha- crisis. Yeah, it was a pretty <laughs> much a midlife crisis. Like I have this camera. How am I going to utilize yeah. it? So I was like, then you he know, met me and everything changed. <laughs> you said that before, okay? Yeah, you I said go. that before. I'm gonna say no, it again. No, no, no. I mean, in, in, in a in a sense, it is facts. Like yeah. you know, like you know, after I started reaching out to closer friends and you know, um, letting allowing them to shoot portrait, you know, people, and I started uh, uploading it to Instagram. That's where I started getting a following and you know people say wow your photography is awesome so i was like oh shit like this might be a thing i'm good at it yeah Yeah. you know that's what i was thinking you know so it was like okay so i'll I'll try to do this more and you know Mm -hmm. so you know reach out to models and around the seattle area um started getting more involved and then that's where the point where i was like bro like Mm -hmm. you know you want to start shooting uh, Cause he saw he saw me behind the scenes. He was mm-hmm. never into it. You know, he would look at what I was doing, like yeah. shooting. I would be there on on set and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Influential friends. Yeah, right. right. See? You know, surround yourself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So so out, yeah that's sure. what inspires. I think yeah. a lot of people is when you're at a point too, because you know, like he was at a point where he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. You know, mm-hmm. he was at doing his hip hop dance and choreography and stuff like that. But and then once I brought him on. And he was see what uh, seeing what I was doing, you know. I allowed him to use my camera, mm-hmm. like go ahead and take photos. You know, he was like, "Damn, this shit is kind of fun." He invested in a new camera, and guess what? It's like now that's what he loves. Now, now you're a photographer. Yeah, now you're yeah. a photographer. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know, so it, it, it's really dope to see the cycle. Right, mm-hmm. you know, full circle, full circle. You right. know, and see see where it goes. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy how we kind of all start off yeah. with you know a passion for art. I never would have mm-hmm. thought I would be at the point where I actually loved ph- uh, photography just Same because, here. yeah, I hated it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, like, yeah. all about filmmaking. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, yeah, no, I love photos. I, I mean, I love videos. I'm never going to do photos. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, I, I think it was to the point where once people started leaving me, I was mm-hmm. like, I had no other choice but to try photography. And yeah. that's what led me into it. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, are you, like, of course, you know, uh-huh. like, I kind of helped you get into that of realm of photography. But, like... You were never at that point where you kind of thought about it either. No, no. Like, I shout out to my Lolo. You know? <laughs> shout out. You know, we got to Show me the race. My sensei. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Wow. Miyagi. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, he don't got the mustache, but he's Mr. <laughs> Miyagi for sure. Yeah, no. Honestly, like, I was super into dance. And um, at the time, I was not dancing as much. And, you know, I was focused into the medical field. Mm-hmm. And I was really in college and stuff like that. And I was really, at that time was like divided into like what I really want to take as a major, you know? So I was like, do I do dance or something in the arts or do I go to the medical field like I'm already going to school for? But then, you know, meeting him, of course, we hung out and he brought me along and to shoots and stuff like that. And eventually I invested into my own camera and then we started shooting the same model and we were just like- You inspired kinda, me though yeah. to get the, the fucking Sony. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I, was the yeah. one thing like, so, so cause Sony I had I had the Panasonic, yeah, right, right. Uh, the GH4, oh, GH4, GH4. Yeah, right, and I was like, you know what? Like after seeing the Sony he got, I was like, okay, like I got I need an upgrade. Yes, <laughs> and so you inspired me on that. Right, and then we still shoot with it to this day. We do. Sony A6300s A6, yeah. if anyone's watching. Yeah, and they're amazing cameras, guys. So I'm, right. you know, of course we're. And they're years old now. Yeah, like but they're, they're brand fucking new. old. Yeah, when we yeah. bought it, they were brand new. Brand but, new. But yeah, so yeah, going back into the story is just like, man, like you never know, like what avenue of life might take you, you know, and For sure, yeah. being open minded into what your friends might bring to you or like to the people you might meet, you know, is always like a beautiful thing, mm-hmm. and you know, since. You know, I was really open minded and, you know, I met a a good friend like ever since then we like kept moving on to the next level of life. And we just like we I never even thought about like moving down to L.A. with him. You know, it was just like a friend. I I was the one that was like, bro, we need to move to fucking L.A. Right, right. And uh, leveling up together. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Just just like a couple. (laughs) (laughs) It was love at first time. It's it's honestly honestly like a family thing. You know, it was like, yeah, you know, like this is my brother. Uh And, you know, the fact that he came to uh, came with me onto shoots and he loved what he was doing. I was like, bro, like. If you love this shit, we need to go to try his, it. Yeah. yeah, 
yeah, you know, we, we need to move to a city where this shit is popping. Because Seattle is not a place where, I mean, you have hella photographers in Seattle, mm-hmm. but it's just like the filmmaking and art uh, photography industry is just not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, you do have a lot of Instagram photographers and stuff like that because that's how we started. Mm-hmm. But it's like now once you get to L.A., it's a different situation. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you meet with everybody. You meet with musicians, artists, filmmakers, other photographers. So it's like that's one of the reasons why I was like, bro, like, I think it's time we move yeah. down to LA yeah. and actually make the shit. Yeah, happen. and I mentioned it in so many other podcasts, so I don't want to dive too deep into it. But yeah, I mean, there were so many times where I doubted myself of like not moving. You know, it took me about two or three years to actually make, make move. that move yeah. and mm-hmm. commit to it because I was so comfortable into where I was because I moved a lot mm-hmm. beforehand. And I was like, man, Seattle's home. It's yeah. where I want to be. Mm-hmm. But I knew, um, you know, the potential I had with dance and I knew. I put that kind of like in the back end for the medical field and looking at photography was like a second chance for me to really fulfill something that I feel passionate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. took that leap and shit, we're here now. We're fucking out here. Let's get some round of applause. Like, for that, you know, let's fucking go. We got a little on a tangent there, but you know, we got to lead back into Sydney a little yes, bit. Um, so, you know, going through your Instagram, of course, you know, um, you also love sketching and you know your artwork is super <laughs> dope like honestly you you killed it with your artwork like oh, thank you did you start drawing and stuff like since seeing your dad you know sitting beside your dad and seeing what he was doing yeah. with graphic design or how did you eventually lead into sketching we interrupt this episode with a word from our sponsor are you a gamer and looking to amp up your gaming setup then we've got an amazing gaming brand for you. Tilted Nation strives to get their customers involved with their development process of new products in order to establish a personal connection and not to mention truly optimized products for the gaming community. They want to go beyond developing amazing products and to lead the gaming community into a united community that works together, a community that pushes gaming essentials to unimaginable heights. They've hooked us up with amazing gear such as this gaming headset stand, mouse pads, and this awesome laptop RGB stand right below my laptop. And now they're hooking you guys up. Use the discount code Artistry Drop on their website, link below, and receive a 15% discount. Now back to the show. You know, my earliest memory of actually drawing, like mm-hmm. where I actually was like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do like create something mm-hmm. was actually in college. I oh, okay. I wasn't taking any art classes, mm-hmm. but I was just like, you know, I had a sketchbook. And I was just doodling. I like mm. to call my drawings like more like doodles. Yeah. Cause I can't really draw dinosaurs. I can't mm-hmm. draw people. Okay. Yeah. Like I, that's just not my style. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I never thought of it as drawing. I thought of it like, oh, I'm sitting here bored drawing a bunch of patterns. Mm-hmm. And then I wanna say maybe like, like sometime last year, I was going through this old like notebook that I found mm-hmm. and it had a bunch of my, I think it was like an old diary from like oh, me being like a three year old, mm-hmm. like very early on. And I was drawing the exact same things. And I don't remember drawing it as a kid, but mm-hmm, like, right. and I was looking at it, I'm like, holy shit, like, th- I've always been doing this. I yeah. just never really realized it. Right. Um, and I don't know, it's it's become a very, like, therapeutic thing for me. Okay. So when I'm, like, stressed out or being a little emotional, I'm mm-hmm. like, let me sit down and let me, you know, it's very therapeutic, all yeah, the right. patterns and consistency. Yeah. That's what I want in my life. Yeah, you know what I mean? mean? So yeah. No, like yeah. the details you had put into your sketches that I had seen, fire. Oh, thank like you. honestly, I can definitely see you put a lot of time because right. I for me, even when I was sketching and drawing, like I never put that amount of time. It was just like dinosaur, boom. Damn. You know, <laughs> trees, boom. Like yeah. but the amount of effort and like everything that you invested into the, your sketches and all that, yeah. fire. Thank right. you. So definitely... I promise I wasn't on drugs. <laughs> no, no, we gotta give you a round of applause. Yeah. Guys, go check out like Sydney's art. Like I know okay. she doesn't have much on there, but it's fire. Thank and you you, thank you killed you. it. Just with scroll your... down a little bit. Yeah, thank scroll you, down. Scroll you. The, it'll... She hasn't posted yeah. anything probably... recently. But <laughs> the doodles are down there. Yeah. It'll take you three minutes or so yeah. to get down there. But yeah. hey, you know They'll what? Come back. They'll come hey, back. They'll come back. When I'm go. going through a stage in my life, I'll, they'll come back. Fire, I promise. Fire. Okay. So what to see. You know, you did mention you had gone to school, but it wasn't for art, right? 
So I went to school, I started off as a communication major. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, before going to college, I remember telling my mom like, oh, I wanna go to like FIDM. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to mm -hmm. go to you know like an art school like those are the options that I really saw myself doing yeah but me being Filipino I mm -hmm. thought that would disappoint people mm -hmm. right and you know obviously the medical thing like they would have mm -hmm. wanted me becoming like a nurse or yeah. like a lawyer or something which I had never any interest in doing mm -hmm. right. um and so I was like okay like I got accepted to a school like let's go here and I chose communication because I was like eh, maybe you know maybe I'll become a journalist maybe mm -hmm. I can become I don't know some type of writer or right. whatever get into marketing and I think like subconsciously I knew like I was gonna ease my way into being in an, an art like program or something mm -hmm. right. yeah. and so when I was having this conversation with my mom she was just like you know you got to choose what you want to do and you got to move forward doing it if you, that's what you're passionate about or if mm -hmm. that's what you're even thinking about because mm -hmm. kind of what you said earlier mm -hmm. like the full circle thing you're gonna mm -hmm. end up doing it in the yeah, end exactly. exactly so even if you choose a path you know, like you're gonna end up doing it. You're gonna find a way to do yeah, it. Right, and right. so that's kind of what happened. Like mm -hmm. I went to college, I think I was in my third, I don't know, second or third year of mm -hmm. college and I wasn't doing so well. Mm -hmm. I was a very bad test taker, even though all these tests were like multiple choice. Me too. <laughs> Shit. I was like, it should be so easy, yeah. but it wasn't. Yeah. And then, you know, I was like, I need to find something else. And I think a, another thing that why I didn't want to apply to an art program was I was being lazy. Mm. I did. You had to show like a portfolio, yeah. and I'm like, mm, right. portfolio. Yeah. I'm like in high school. Yeah. What portfolio can I show you? Mm -hmm. So I think right. it was nice because I was already in college, and I was like, oh, I could just sign up into another program mm -hmm. without having to, you know, show a, show a portfolio. Yeah. And it right. ended up like boosting my GPA. Mm -hmm. I graduated right. because of it. I like yes. to think of it that way. Hey, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go. But, yeah. <laughs> the math, now I got two degrees, so nice. it's like, it's fine, it's no. good, I'll Gucci. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. You know, kind of going back to what you had talked about, you know, with Filipino parents, you know, and this is something I know just because I've, of course, you know, I'm Filipino, my dad is Filipino, my mom is white, so it was, for me, it wasn't like one of those things where it was like, you need to go to medical field or anything, yeah. and my, the fact that my dad had, you know, grown up as pretty much like an American, um, and he also did not graduate either. So it was like, you know, for him, for and with me, it didn't really matter too much, you know. Mm -hmm. But seeing, of course, my family, my cousins and all that, that was something I definitely saw where it was like, you know, I would love to see new medical and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you didn't want to disappoint them. Or like, right, right, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, I feel like for, I guess for my family, it's a little bit different because literally my whole family are jewelers. You know, oh, my wow. dad is a jeweler. All my, There's some creativity in there. There is, which is yeah. dope. You know, it, it is dope. So it's like my dad's a jeweler. Um, my uncles, um, a couple of them have passed already, but uh, they were all in, involved in jewelry because my grandpa. Mm. So, you know, it's like my grandpa raised them to be jewelers. Um, but of course, you know, it was like once, you know, my uncles and, you know, they had kids, which are my cousins, mm -hmm. of course, it's like, they kind of wanted them to evolve into yeah. like medical mm -hmm. you know exactly. mm -hmm. yeah for like me that. like um i didn't grow up with your typical like asian family but i grew up you know my mom is lao, is lao and then my dad is my stepdad he's black but my biological dad you know he's lao as well but um growing up like my step with my stepdad and my mom you know they were both in the medical field my dad was a combat medic you know he's an ma and uh, Virginia Mason and stuff like that so of course like they had a heavy influence for me to be in the medical field and they never thought of like being in the arts and you know they went of course they supported me in some extent of like going to talent shows mm -hmm. seeing I'm doing all these shows and da 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 and performances and stuff like that but they always like okay when you're gonna get a real job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like yeah. like but I was actually making money like dancing but it, of course it wasn't good enough like yeah. in their eyes at the mm -hmm. time and then growing up and going to college and stuff like that they're like okay is this something you really want to do I'm like no <laughs> I'm here yeah. you know and I do love like helping people and you know giving back to people so I resonated with the medical field in that sense but you know it wasn't 100% of who I wanted to mm -hmm. be so of course like coming back into the arts yeah and now doing it to this extent of course now my parents like believe in me they're yeah. like oh yeah. wow you made it this far mm -hmm. and you're thriving you them wrong right yeah. and they're like okay yeah this is we support you 100%. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, you know, we live in another generation of like, 
where we have to prove to our parents that like there is a different way of like source of income Mm -hmm. you know because for for them it's like you have to have a nine to five in order mm-hmm. to succeed. And yeah. at, by, at the end of the day, your parents, that's all what they want for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like for you to succeed. Mm-hmm. So of course they're gonna embed that nine to five because they won't, they don't wanna see you struggle, of yeah. course. So that, yeah, but you need to prove to them. It comes from love. Of mm-hmm. course, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. that's the bigger picture, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, that a lot of people and a lot of younger viewers listening or watching, you know, might not see, oh, my parents, they don't believe in me. They don't mm-hmm. do any, you know, they don't even come to my things, but it's, it's a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. So yeah, I hope like people listening really no, it, resonate with you that. know, it even got to the point where, you know, like when we were moving, uh, especially the day where, you know, um, cause he was already, he moved down here before me. Um, oh really? Yeah, he actually oh, moved down I here. That. I think a, a week or so before me. Yeah. And you know, I mean, we planned to move together, yeah. but mm-hmm. I got a job. He in got the a job before I did, so I was okay. able to transfer first. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, um, you know, I I had to reassure his mom, like, I'm gonna take care of your baby boy. <laughs> Don't worry, because you know, of course, like, you know, moving to LA was definitely one of the. It was my idea. You know, like if I didn't, if I never brought it up, like, you know, everything goes back to me. He yeah. wouldn't have moved to LA without me asking, right. you know. So the fact that he actually wanted to come, it was like, you know, don't worry, like he's my bro. Like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna take care of him mm-hmm. and you know make sure he's doing well. So I had to reassure her, you know, and she yeah. actually appreciated, you know, no, she, she appreciated, sure. you know, that I said that. Aww. So mm-hmm. you know, like like I said, it was like, of course, you know, when I know it's my responsibility mm-hmm. to the point where I was like, bro, let's move to fucking LA and you decided to do it, it's on me mm. at first. It's at first. <laughs> if anything yeah. goes wrong, yeah. just blame yeah. him. Yeah. Because yeah. then his mom, like, <laughs> his mom might be like, you know what, you fucked up. Yeah. You know, so she might. She might. She so might. so it's she like might. that that's why I had to yeah. reassure yeah. her yeah. In the, you know in the first place. Yeah, that's, so, you know. that's true. Yeah. So going back to your to schooling, like uh and you're a graphic designer in in the field now do you think like where you're at now school was like a necessity to become where you are now i would say no Mm -hmm. no okay and this is only because i from what i know or i think i know Mm -hmm. my dad never went to school for Mm -hmm. design he's now an art director and and you know like his path was he, I want to say he went to like, I don't know, maybe like IT, like an IT program. Mm-hmm. And, okay. but his passion was drawing. He yeah. loved doing that. He used to work at like, I don't know, like a surf shop or skate shop or something. Mm-hmm. And he was like actually one of the salespeople there. But then also he was doing like freelance, weightboard, skateboard mm-hmm. designs. Okay. And then I think, you know, because he just started to do that, he, it kind of just built his portfolio and everything was based off a portfolio, basically. Right, right. Um, and I think like with any creative field, like if you're, you know, like a, a writer, a videographer, a photographer, um, a graphic designer, like those are skills that you can learn Mm -hmm. yourself Mm -hmm. if you're really like passionate about learning it. Like if you want to, you know, achieve something, Mm -hmm. like someone can easily do that. Yeah. Right, right. You know, and like you can, for example, I know I'm terrible at a dinosaur, but if I really (laughs) worked hard to draw a dinosaur, I know I could, you know. But it's, yeah, it's just like, do I have a passion to draw mm. a dinosaur? No offense. Yeah. Hey, no, but, no offense but, taken. But, yeah. but no I offense mean, taken. like, you know, like if you're really yeah. passionate about doing it, like you don't have to go to school to do yeah. it. Facts. Um, I mean, obviously, it does look better if you know you're trying to apply to a corporate job, mm-hmm. and then they see like, okay, they they did this. But if you have a strong portfolio, I don't think you do. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that right. leads back to the same exact thing with me because right. you know um, I've told you this. You know I I worked for that women's brand, being their videographer mm-hmm. and stuff like that, going to film school and stuff like that. And I feel like I look back on going to film school, it was not worth it. And yeah. I've told them this: it's not worth it because it's something you it, it's your art and mm-hmm. you have to build it up yourself your portfolio mm-hmm. yeah film school taught you a lot um and especially you know i've i've said this multiple times on the podcast film school taught you like what you need to know if you want to be in the film industry like you want to work on set of marvel and mm-hmm. stuff like that corporate mm-hmm. stuff yeah corporate yeah. stuff you know it, it helps uh because you know they're not going to take a, a normal person based off just their portfolio or their resume mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. they want to know that you actually know what you're doing on the, like if they they say some film terminology and you don't know what C-clamp, they're saying something. yeah something something so or small or yeah. yeah like and you respond like what is that like you're fired yeah right away so Mm -hmm. like i said you know like going back to film school it helped because i learned a lot of that so 
trying to get onto a film set, it, it may be easy for me. But going back to what I'm doing now, I see it wasn't, you know, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, right. Especially, you know, doing a lot more freelance type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, working in the film industry, like, you know, being a part of the Academy, the Oscars, mm-hmm. that's where film school helped me now. Mm-hmm. It, get, it got me to that point. But I would say that's pretty much it. As far as my work goes, that was shit I kind of practice up on yeah. and, you know, watch yeah. a lot you of YouTube. You learn as you go, for sure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, the, it, it is a big debate whether, you know, going to art school, film school, and, you know, stuff like that is actually a necessity mm-hmm. or is it important? Um, and I don't know. For me, it, it's only important in certain cases, like I said, oh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So, to learn technical things, like technical terms and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But yeah. I think, mm-hmm. you know, something – I remember being in college and taking a class – and there were there were people that would fail these classes because mm-hmm. you know they were, I think they they were very creative people, but they would get so stuck in like the thought process of like, oh, am I doing this right? This isn't mm-hmm. good enough. That sometimes they weren't turning projects, mm-hmm. oh, and it would get to like the last day where we would do our final, and there were no shows, yeah. and it was just like, why? You're the the most creative person here. Mm-hmm. Like it, it didn't make sense to me, and I think that's what sucks about going to like an art school is that yeah. you know they really judge you by your creativity mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. everyone is like creative in their own way they have their own style which is exactly. like you know you're talking right. about my style of drawing and mm-hmm. like to me mm-hmm. I never wanted to put that out because I always felt like people would be like oh it's just you know doodles right. mm-hmm. whatever but you know I've, I've gotten really good feedback yeah. about it which mm-hmm. makes me want to continue doing it exactly. right. but you know it sucks because there are a lot of people that people will get judged, mm-hmm. but really yeah. you know, but people are judging them for the wrong reason. Like that's their expression. Like yeah, it, yeah. I, don't right. know. I mean, it's people really... like doodling. Like I understand. <laughs> I call it like doodling. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I I get what you're saying. But it's like, I would say with what you do, it's like it, it is art. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. doodling can be already art because yeah. the, that that kind of shit is something a typical person won't be able to do Mm -hmm. you know some people actually just you know draw circles and you know because they're bored like um Mm -hmm. you know i had my meeting with our our team meeting with the academy like uh last week Mm -hmm. and the guy sitting next to me he was just drawing circles that's it (laughs) it just kind of kept him busy that's actual doodling yeah that's doodling i would say Uh but with what you do it's like if you consider that doodling no like i consider that shit art (laughs) it's more like freehand that's like freestyling yes nothing is ever perfectly shaped and that bothers me Mm -hmm. but then to other people like they're like no it looks i'm like "Uh uh-uh yeah like one eye is bigger than the other like that does (laughs) not look right no i mean like i said you know going back to your art your art is amazing and it's a lot it's something that a lot of people can't do right. because you know going back to what i did in elementary school a lot of people were surprised they were like wow like you can actually draw like this mm-hmm. i was like yeah but and then you know there's that like 50 or 70 percent that of people that don't have that ability mm-hmm. so it's like whatever you were doing that's with, when they're good at math it, and exactly. i'm terrible at math i am right. too See? i am too so yeah. you know but like it's I said, yeah, yeah yeah so it's like you know like there's those people where they're good at art Mm -hmm. which is what you're good at Mm -hmm. and there's those people that like the people that say oh that's just doodling those are people that can't fucking do anything (laughs) like honestly like they're jealous yeah they're jealous they can't do anything i mean if you call what you were doing doodling i'd be like no like bro that's fucking art (laughs) (laughs) you know so yeah yeah, that's yeah um yeah i definitely resonate with that too when it comes to like dance Mm because i see your doodling as like a freestyle dancer you know of course we're not going to be like perfect when it Mm -hmm. comes to dancing because we're freestyling compared to like choreography right you know choreography is in a box you got to look like you know the next person or or the the next next year yeah person next to you Mm -hmm. and that's the same way with art and drawing like you got to be exact precise in the way you go about it but there's a lot of love into like being you know uncontrollable mm-hmm. and being yourself in that freestyle realm because i come from a freestyle background so like um and a lot of people you know I, I i understand when you say a lot of people judge you a lot of people hate you because like for me going into a, a choreography class i am not that great but then like after the class everybody gets into a cypher and nobody could freestyle mm-hmm. and then that's where i come in they're like oh he could really dance but during the class they're like who is this guy <laughs> you know yeah. they're ju- they're judging me yeah mm-hmm, you know so sure. i i definitely yeah uh, everyone the has their thing right, yeah. right, exactly. exactly and it, it shouldn't be 
that way but of course social media that's makes what, it that's yeah. just how, it how it is yeah. you know? that's how it is in our yeah. society it is yeah. fortunately yeah so um going back to you you know um um a lot of your art and i think you have a lot of like dope fashion sense and you know you dress really thanks, well thanks. like what are some of your like biggest inspirations when it comes to your art or your fashion um Right now, I want to say streetwear. Streetwear. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I talk about my dad designing skateboards as a kid, and that was kind of the environment that I grew up around. You know, like, okay. we, my, my dad was always into the extreme sports, and so, okay. you know, I really enjoyed watching, like, people skating. I enjoyed mm-hmm. watching people snowboarding, um, even, like, weightboarding. I don't know. That was just always, like, the thing that I liked, and right. I would look at, you know, the way people would dress, the way mm-hmm. people, you know, like they're closing like shoes, like skateboarding shoes. And um, I guess I get a lot of my inspiration from, you know, streetwear yeah. and like the sport, like sports, I guess. Yeah. Um, right now I'm in a boy vibe, yeah. wearing a lot of baggy clothes and <laughs> it's stuff. It's all good. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's a style. Yeah, it's, it's a style that, though. That's the streetwear shit. Yeah, that, yeah. and so, yeah, yeah I, think, I think right now, and especially because I feel like back then, um, I, I, maybe it was, I don't know, I just probably wasn't old enough, but, you know, fashion and hip-hop also, I feel like, became a lot bigger now right. and more recently yeah. um, with having, like, the bigger celebrities, like, really coming out and, like, I don't know, with their, their trending styles and stuff. And so I guess that's yeah. where my influence comes that's dope. from. Yeah, yeah, I definitely that see dope. that when you mentioned that, like, skate style. Did you ever, like, mm-hmm. skate since you were, like, into I, that? I attempted okay. a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm more a snowboarder. Oh, I've, really? I've gotten dope. better and better over that's the dope. years, mm-hmm. but, you know, I, I tried. I yeah. tried yeah. skateboarding. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. don't know, but I act, before dancing, I actually started skateboarding, too, and, nice. you know, I knew how to do kickflips and, of course, like, basic ollie and shit like that, but my uncle, he was, like, really into the sta- skate community and and he wanted to teach me how to like drop into like oh, yeah. ramp, mm-hmm. and then I was so scared. You know, I would have those like ramps. <laughs> I'd be scared too. Yeah, I would have those little ramps that you set up like at home. On, yeah, at home <laughs> or like on the street. Um, but like going up to like an actual ramp, I was like terrified, and I'm scared of heights too. So oh, that was no. like hey, yeah. too, the, yeah. not meant the, for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't kidding. meant to be. But <laughs> you I, can still do it. <laughs> I tried it, and I sprained my ankle <gasps> so bad, and I was crying, and I would never forget it. I always mention this to my mom too, because. She she knew I was so hurt, but she made me go to school the next day. Oh. <laughs> and we lived on the fourth floor, no elevator. I had to li- limp down the stairs oh and up gosh. the stairs, and I t- had to take the the bus to school. Did so, you have crutches or anything? No, or you, oh, I no. was literally l- uh, limping. <laughs> And then I went to school, and I was late to... This was, like, in middle school, so I was late to, like, every period. Oh, my god! And gosh. I had to go to the nurse, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm late. Like, I need a pass. I don't got crutches oh, or anything, no. stuff like that. Luckily, she gave me a pass, but till this day, my mom, like, I always, you know bring that up because yeah. I was like why'd you make me go to school like yeah. that was terrible that was yeah. a time I'll never I, I know exactly how you feel I recently sprained my ankle for the first time in my life okay I sprained it last year and I was such a baby because I was like hopping around like I can't yeah. stand like I'm like limping I remember having to like wrap up my foot and I didn't walk maybe for like two months I would mm-hmm. walk on crutches which was like the worst idea I apparently like when you do sprain your ankle, you're supposed to keep walking on it. Mm, okay. I didn't know I, that. I didn't know that yeah, either. I, know that. I mean, I mean, yeah. I learned that from my boyfriend because I guess okay. he's like broke both ankles oh, before okay. and like sprained it a lot of times. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you just gotta keep playing. You gotta keep going. Mm, I'm like, wow. no, I'm in pain. <laughs> yeah. And and because I wasn't moving it, uh-huh. I like was struggling even more to oh, wow. heal. Mm-hmm. It. So. Your mom's a smart woman. <laughs> uh, she made, she gave me a tough skin for sure. She knows. Yeah, she knows. yeah, yeah. no, yeah, I, even sure. for me, you know, I had a situation too where um, it was in middle school. Um, don't say some shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> don't say what some shit. What did you do? No, he's I just going like, to go back and make the old joke nah, I was and in stuff like that. So. Probably. <laughs> I don't even know if I was born. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Really <laughs> That's where he was getting that. That's what I was trying to ask you. No, but there was a point where... Fuck, I forget what it was. I think yeah, it was, when you uh, talk about like dinosaurs and stuff, it makes sense. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> those were his pets. When yes. <laughs> he used to oh, ride no, them like no, horses. Those were his, his brothers and sisters. No, like, no, no, he no, grew no, up with dinosaurs. No, 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 no. No, so I think it was either uh, when we had track session. Um, you used to or, run? Yeah. Oh wow. In middle school. 
Like, I, I think I was pretty quick, too. Be, uh, it was like, uh, what do you call that uh, shit where you pass the baton? Oh, yeah. Uh, or whatever it is. Cross country. <laughs> cross country shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think that's cross country. Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't know. I don't know either. I wouldn't I be re- running cross country with a oh, stick, a baton in my hand. Okay. That's something else. I, okay, I don't remember what it's called, but I think that's where it happened where um, I sprained my ankle. And I sprained my ankle so many times as a kid uh, from playing basketball, land, you know, going up for yeah, a layup and, and landing slick. funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That shit fucking hurts so um i remember i was on crutches for a minute mm. and crutches fucking suck yeah shit at least you all had crutches <laughs> damn i didn't have no crutches. i could not imagine like you oh. not walking around with crutches i got one strong left leg that's what it is <laughs> you were hopping like a bunny yeah, i was yeah literally. at least you weren't driving it are you a righty or a lefty um i'm a righty oh you have to uh. drive either way with a right foot right um, Even if you're a lefty, yeah, yeah you yeah, do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. at least you weren't driving. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was limping. It could be that, worse. That's <laughs> fine. I'm I'm glad you survived through that. Shit, then. I am too, man. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so you know, going back to your IG, um, you you were a lot more invested in your art and you know posting a lot of your art your photography and stuff but you slowly progress into mm-hmm. uh posting yourself as like a model and stuff like at yeah. what point was it like you know what i think i might take up a little modeling or posting myself i think it was always something that i wanted to do you mm-hmm. know like as a kid like i said my mom used to take pictures of me a lot mm-hmm. okay. and i remember um i tell this story now because i've had an open conversation with my cousin about it mm-hmm. and so okay. basically as a kid mm-hmm. My mom, you know, she'd always take pictures of me, and so I wanted to do modeling as a kid. And I remember her and my aunt and my cousin, we went to this agency to get signed as, like, little kids. And at the time, I, like, hated my cousin Mm -hmm. because she's younger than me. But, like, I felt like she was you know, like taking my mom away from me because my mom, she was like the baby. So like my mom, you know, was obviously, I understand now, my mom's just Uh nice to everybody. (laughs) But at the time I was like, no, like, you know. (laughs) And and I remember being at this agency and my mom had filled out all the paperwork and we were supposed to take our headshots. And my aunt came up to me and she was like, yeah, do it so you can take, so you can model with your cousin. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Uh. I don't want to do this, I don't want (laughs) to. And then, you know, and then we walked out and I never did it and Mm. so, you know, but I, as a kid I remember my mom you know I loved doing that like mm. not not to say like you know I was just like self what is it like self self-conscious co- no no more like just like into myself it wasn't about that I just mm. appreciate like the art of it you mm. know okay. and then as I got older you know I got really into fashion in college I w- had an internship with mm-hmm. this thing called college fashionista where mm-hmm. I had to write styling blogs mm-hmm. it was a writing internship and so I also like had to write about myself, like my style, and I think that really, you know, helped me to start posting more outfit pictures. Mm-hmm. And then I, I connected, you know, with my friends that I didn't know were really into photography back then. And then as we got older, you know, yeah, of course. yeah, we became yeah. like closer, and then we would collab and do all that stuff. So I was really, really into it, and I really loved doing it. I still love doing it. But, you know, because of COVID, things changed. Yeah. Everyone's kind of evolved into something else. Mm-hmm. But I still want to get back into it. Yeah. And I'm trying. I'm really trying. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. think, like, over the past two years, I've kind of become this person where I'm not entirely glued to my phone anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, in the moment of, like, being with the people that I'm in front of or, mm-hmm. you know, that's, being that's, at work good, or, yeah. you know. And, and I try to. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to find the balance. Yeah. You right. know, that's, work and life and... That's yeah. amazing, yeah, you know, right. because that's how it should be. Like, I feel like we're in a society now where it's like we get so sucked into our phone, mm-hmm. especially when yes. you're a big creator. It's mm-hmm. like that's all you rely on. You know, yeah. I mean, of course, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm always on my phone. But the thing is, I've reduced the amount of time where I'm on Instagram. Yes, I yeah. use Instagram as a platform now where it's like we post our content. Yeah. We mm-hmm. try to get our stuff out there. But it's so rare now that I go through my feed and see what's mm-hmm. popping with people. Oh, yeah. And, you right. know, mm-hmm. it, it's so rare now. It's literally like I just use it as the platform to post stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mm-hmm. used to use it as a platform where I would, you know, try to engage with people mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, if people hit me up, um, you know, I'm going to engage with them no matter sure, what. Yeah. But it's, it's just gotten to the point where I'm not like that anymore. Yeah. And yeah. It's, I, it, it's a great platform to promote what you're trying to do your art and you know your business whatever it is like 
Instagram is probably one of the best platforms to mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. Like even for me, like yeah, I, I reduce my time with social media, but also reduce my time of like texting. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Before I'm like I used to text <laughs> right away, but then now mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm I'm like in that in the moment. I'm living in the moment. I have my phone down, so yeah. I I tell everybody who I'm close to. I'm like. You know, I'm really bad at texting. Yeah. yeah, like, like I, I'm gonna get to yeah. my text yeah. like at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Type if of you shit. if you leave a voice memo, that interests me more than a text. Yeah. Memo. Right, yeah. or if you call yeah, me, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 If, if you call, call me, me, it might be the right better. time. I'll, I'll pick up and or I'll FaceTime talk. Me, that's mm-hmm. easier. Right, yeah. right. It'll be short, quick. Yeah, we get mm-hmm. it done. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know, yeah. move yeah. on with the day. But yeah, I really like. Yeah, I feel with that like living in the moment type of shit. Like, yeah. If it's business, you know, like like I said, you know, with the podcast and you know trying to get you or you know other artists on here, that's where it's like I'm glued to my phone because of course you know it's like priority. Yeah, it's priority. Mm -hmm. We're trying Mm -hmm. to build our business, so it's like that's where we're at when it comes to social media Mm -hmm. because you know like majority of people that's how you connect. Like a lot of people nowadays don't give their phone out. It's only Instagram. Yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. so like that's. Uh, uh, one of the main reasons why I would say I'm also on Instagram is like once I see a message pop up and it's related to artistry job or mm-hmm, photography, mm-hmm. it's like I'm on it. Yeah, you know, because it's a business. But as far as like promoting and stuff like that, I'll post like once every couple days or once two days, whatever it is. You yeah. know, that's it, and I'm off. Yeah, like right. I barely go through the feed anymore. Um, just to see what's popping. Yeah. I'll, I'll check my story views and shit like that, but mm-hmm. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, but it's so crazy how I've evolved to the point where it's like, Instagram is just not this place where I want to be stuck on anymore. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go through it. Um, just, I guess, just to look at the likes and what mm-hmm. we've received mm-hmm. as far as, you know, business yeah. goes and stuff like that. I think that. with right. like social media too, and I think that's starting to bother me. And mm. I think to some people it may be a good thing, but I feel like, I feel like for me, the only things I really see are like these trends. Mm-hmm. And right. I feel like in a way, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm now right now I'm speaking towards like dance videos, but like, mm-hmm. you know, like you have the people that are good at it mm-hmm. and that's kind of just like it, but you see multiple mm-hmm. people doing the same exact thing. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. there's not a lot of originality Facts. and that's what like I like to see. Yeah. Right. And so now I'm starting to find myself looking at animal videos because <laughs> they're, you can't tell an animal to do the same yes. like trending video. Exactly. Like right. they're just, you know, mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah, so right. I don't know. I, I'm starting to like more of those type of things mm-hmm. versus like, fashion or, or like you know those fashion videos people doing the same exact thing wearing mm. the same exact outfit yeah, like right, right. it's just i don't know it's Played definitely out. changed yeah. Yeah. yeah no it definitely sure. has changed and i think you know um social media in general is just going to evolve into something new where mm-hmm. a lot of us that have grown with it in a certain point it's it's going to be so different for us we're like okay like i don't like it this way yeah. or you know stuff mm-hmm. like that sure. and it's it's going to keep growing no matter what and that's I'd say one of the reasons or an issue with that is it's gonna push a lot of people away yeah. from social media. Me. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, it, you know it is hey. what it, it is what it is. Like that's just how it is because you know with us growing up with Instagram being one certain way, especially when it comes to chronological mm-hmm. order, you know, on mm-hmm. Instagram, it's changed. Yeah, it's changed. You know, and I think that was one of the best ways for a lot of us to connect with the people we follow mm-hmm. because it's like you'll see their posts. But nowadays, today, you just don't see anybody's yeah. posts anymore. So yeah. it's like, even for you, like, I barely see your posts anymore. Yeah. If, right. Even if you did post, it's like, it's <laughs> not. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, we don't yeah. have yeah, a fire. But today. Hey, hey, it's, <laughs> good, it's good you stayed away from it. But mm-hmm. I'm just getting, like, at the point in general, it's like, if one of our friends were to post, you may not see it. Yeah. Right. So you're not going to know because mm-hmm. of the whole algorithm and yeah. all that, which sucks. And I think that's what's pushing a lot of people away. Or, you know, a lot of people will only hit the notification bell if it's on their friend and see mm-hmm. what they post, Yeah, right. you know, which makes sense. And um, I don't know if you heard, we talked about this mm-hmm. on their other podcast, but um, Instagram is finally coming out with an update so you can actually change the chronological order. If you want to go chronological mm-hmm. order, if you want to go favorites, or if you want to go back to the algorithm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did mm-hmm. hear about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I so, think that's pretty. I mean, it kind of sucks because even if you want to see a certain thing, that doesn't mean the next person's going to be doing that. Right, right. So it it's not really at advantage, mm-hmm. yeah. I think, for you, but not for you in another yeah. sense. Yeah. Exactly. Sucks. As a yeah. marketing yeah. aspect, it's you, not. you, you mm-hmm. never know. And it definitely, like, 
it's more of a gamble now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now yeah, that you sure. everybody has that choice, yeah, it's gonna be more beneficial to you personally. But mm-hmm. yeah, as a marketing standpoint, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah sure. and I also feel like you know, with getting older, like social media is just. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not saying I'm fading away from it. It's just, I guess I'm to the point where it's like you know I'm all business now. Mm-hmm. It's like you know we're trying to build a business and you know we're posting shit about you know um, artistry drop or I'm posting my photography. Once I'm done, I'm off. Yeah. Like that's pretty much it. I'll see how much likes I got. I'll see how many views I got. Base that off an of analytics, and that's pretty much it. Versus, mm-hmm. you know, what I used to be before, like scroll through, like, 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 mm-hmm. just to be engaged with people. Oh my gosh, I remember, like, when we first became Instagram friends, I was like, who is this guy? He knows literally all my <laughs> friends. Oh, yeah. And then now it's so funny because if I, like, find, like, a friend and then I, like, I'm just, like, you know, I'm scrolling and I see he uh-huh. likes the picture, I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you know this person? Yeah. Yeah. It's just so funny. Yeah. And that was yeah. the thing, you know, like, that was, I think that was probably because we had met literally once I moved yeah so it was during that time you know when I was trying to connect with a lot of LA network people and, network mm-hmm. and stuff like that so that I'm pretty sure that's where it came from but mm-hmm. that's where it, it's like you have to follow people for you to network or mm-hmm. connect with people to yeah. get to the point where you want to you know so like I said I mean that's it, it it's one of those things where it was just a whole networking um business type of thing mm-hmm. but it's like now that shit has helped me a lot yeah you know it's like it's gotten us especially us to a point where we're like wow like i barely have to do like any Mm -hmm. following or anything like that because it's like you did the hard work yeah i did the hard work in the beginning so it's like now we're doing Mm -hmm. the actual work and you know people notice the work they follow Mm -hmm. so i mean that's just how it is and it it was a grind at first and it was a couple years of grinding Mm -hmm. uh just to get to that point where it's like trying to get the recognition you know, I guess that's what it was, is I was trying to get the recognition, and we kind of talked about this actually last mm-hmm. night, mm-hmm. where establishing yourself as um, a name of a photographer or a videographer, mm-hmm. it's important because if you don't, nobody's going to know who you are. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, think about like somebody trying to buy your services, nobody knows you, they're going to go to the next person. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so it was like... You got to build your brand. Exactly. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, the whole point of like trying to connect with people or network with people down here was establishing the brand Mm -hmm. and it's very important especially when you come from a different city Mm -hmm. like you have no other choice but to do so yeah you You gotta start all over Mm -hmm. you gotta start all over Mm -hmm. so you know i'm glad you know we've met and you know Mm -hmm. i was i'm glad we've connected with so many other people down here and you know it's it's going so well especially even with the pandemic Mm-hmm. you know i'm excited for more of the future but yeah of no, course yeah of course are, of course for sure um so of course you know i want to get back into the modeling stuff um this is the juicy stuff a little bit the juicy, the stuff. juicy, juicy. stuff because sometimes it can get a little juicy but you know uh, like what you know as a model as well uh i mean i know you haven't shot as know, much yeah. in a while but you know when you were doing it yeah like um were you the one to like reach out to photographers or were photographers the one to reach out to you to shoot? Um, people would reach out to me. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like I, I would have, but I don't think I grew enough confidence mm. to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm small. I'm like, you know, I, I'm not like this tall model that like people want to shoot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, I think I was still learning. I was still learning because it's, it's a whole technique. You got to yeah. learn poses. You got to mm-hmm. you got to find the right face. You know, you got to see what angle works for you. I'm still trying to figure out if this is a situation, <laughs> you know, like like so. Um, I think I was I wasn't really you know confident in myself to reach out to people, but mm-hmm. people would hit me up. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you know I'd be like, okay, I'm down. I would like try to see what their vibe was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know, yesterday I was actually looking through my um, my messages, and there's a lot. I mean, because of Instagram doing mm-hmm. some weird ass shit that they're yep. doing, I have a lot of like messages that are hidden that I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And it's so many people like hitting me up, like saying like, oh, like I'm in LA, we should shoot. And you know, most of the time they're all like sketchy people yeah, that no, I'm seeing in my yeah, DMs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, oh my gosh, like. I don't know if they're just hitting me up just to like hit someone up and like connect somehow but i was just like okay it's some recognition too i feel like you know the fact that you've also kind of built yourself as um being in la um i think it's just one of those those things where it's like they notice you have shot 
you know, mm-hmm. or modeled and stuff. So it's like, I want to shoot with you. Yeah. I think that's just how it works in general. Yeah. You know, it's like once you see a girl modeling or, you know, posing in front of the camera, it's like the next photographer that's also working towards a goal of being a photographer. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, can we shoot? Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. I love your style yeah. and stuff like that. And that's how everybody starts off. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's how I started off when we moved down here. You know, Same I hit you. Yeah. I mm-hmm. hit you up. Yeah. You know, like, let's fucking shoot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. Yeah, and we, we got some heat though. Yeah, we, we got some heat, you know. So we, we might have to bring that yeah. that whole shooting let's, thing. Let's that whole do it. Sh- yeah, yeah, we got to do it we again. We got to all be there. Yeah, yeah. we got to all be there. Yeah. We might as well shoot. shoot. Yeah, shoot yeah. some content together. Yes, um, but knowing that now, like, have you ever had issues with like? Um, weird photographers or awkward shoots or anything like that because a lot of models I I wouldn't say a lot of them have had issues with that but some have some stories yeah you know I'm a very like I'm a I'm a type of person that's very like stranger danger Mm -hmm. like I have a good sense of like okay this person's not like not a good person this person's being sketchy so thankfully I've been really good at like not responding to people that I like catch that vibe okay Um, but my cousin, the one that's in modeling, uh-huh. I, you know, she like tells me of, like certain things or because she she does reach out to people okay. or like people will reach out to her and I'm sure you know she's had a lot of stories and I know mm. they're out there. Right, right. But thankfully, hey, let's go. She, she, you got her. Yeah, that's good for backup. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She'll <laughs> tell that, me what's up. Is she the one that sings as well? Yes, that's oh, okay, the one. Okay, okay, that's okay. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I kind that's of figured. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you know when we first met as well, uh, you were more lean into like photography. Um, mm-hmm. but, and then you kind of transitioned into doing like videography type yeah. stuff. Like what, at what point were you like, I want to try to do some videography type of stuff? I think it was the same, the same, you know, period of time when I was like, okay, I want to do more photo stuff because I've always been into fashion mm-hmm. and, you know, I, it's funny because I would look at Fashion Nova's like, like videos that they had on, mm-hmm. um, you know, like their page or like their YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I love that style. Like that was the style that I've always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, okay. you know, when I quit my job after getting a concussion, I was like, this is my time to do like fashion photo and video. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was a kind of like parallel thing that yeah. I, I decided to pick up on. Um, and I kind of did it as a kid. But, you know, when I started to transition to video, it was like, I want to be better at it. Mm-hmm. I want to okay. make a career at yeah. it. And I remember like hitting you up like, hey, yeah. how do I use yeah. this? Yeah. Your I, Ronin, your Ronin. Yeah, like yeah. my Ronin, which I yeah. don't have anymore because I you don't have any more. Well, my well, Live Nation, you know, like yeah. they, they they supplied me with things. Oh, okay. And oh, when okay. I left, I was like, here you go. <laughs> um, and you know, that's partially the reason why I don't really do so much video anymore okay. is because I don't have a Ronin. Yeah. Um, but also I work a nine to five too, mm-hmm. so. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I did had it, have it, which I'm saving up to get it again, yeah. like uh, I'll, I'll shoot more video. Yeah. And because I think, you know, having these certain things, it definitely helps you, yeah, obviously, in like getting the shots that you want and to do the style that you want. Mm. And like you can edit, like post edit exactly. stuff, but it's not the same. Yeah. yeah right. You know, so um, that was, you know, it is just that was one of the things that I really wanted to do as well. And I think, you know, just to get myself to work at a professional level. You gotta you gotta be able to step it up and learn yeah. through things to do it. No, exactly. Sure. And you know, like that's one of the things too I feel like is, you know, I've gone through a lot of different kind of equipment mm-hmm. and I would sell them and then I would regret selling it because yeah. I'm like, fuck, like this shit would have came in handy. I was like, do I give it back? Yeah. We'll never know. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, no, I gotta give it back. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. So I, I definitely understand like, you know, that struggle because there are, have been times where, you know, it's like what we're dealing with uh, now with shooting music videos, I've gone from like shooting with gimbals mm-hmm. to now just straight up steady cams, and steady cams mm-hmm. is something I've done for years even before Mm gimbals came out yeah and now it it got to the point where i was like fuck like i miss shooting with steady cams now i have to buy a whole setup spent hundreds of dollars just getting back into it the end Uh, result is better the end result is better it's it's just because you know like of course like gimbals are amazing and they're amazing for certain things but steady cams just give this look to your footage where it's like it's more natural. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it has to do with your style too. Right, right, for sure. if, yeah. if that's your style and mm-hmm. you're good at that style, of course you're gonna go back to it. And of course, mm-hmm. you know, like you're gonna create something even better than something that with an equipment that you don't necessarily need or mm-hmm. like want. You know what yeah, I mean? So, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I mean, knowing that you had worked with Live Nation, you were doing their photography, videography stuff. Like, how was it working for them? 
it was good you know um i worked in merchandise and Mm. and they had never had a person that was doing design but was also you know producing like photo shoots and photo and video and Mm. all that stuff and also doing product images and like flat lays Mm. um i think it was a really really great opportunity for me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wish i could have you know stuck around um, but because of COVID, you yeah. know, you know, with that industry, it was yeah. a little bit difficult. And I found myself in a position where I needed to find something else. I mm-hmm. needed to make a next move and yeah. like transition. Mm-hmm. Um, but 100%, it was something that I got, I was like put in a really great position where I got to do all the things that I love doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I, maybe one day I'll go back to it. Maybe yeah. because obviously I want to like level up and eventually be an art director mm-hmm. and it is great knowing that I could do all those things I have mm-hmm. the knowledge of doing all those things yeah. so. right right no that's, that's dope. necessary yeah, yeah. Sure. you know like the pandemic has hurt mm-hmm. a lot of us creatives no, you know sure. like me being a videographer for a women's brand I got laid off mm-hmm. um fortunately you know since he was in medical like he was definitely lucky I was but- good yeah, you were good. So, so, <laughs> they need you. Yeah, yeah, no. So, but of course, you know, you were also in the creative field just yeah. like me. And, you know, it definitely hurt a lot of us. Like, with the pandemic and being in a creative field, like, how did you cope with it? And what did you actually do to try to, you know, maybe level yourself? Like, were you kind of just like, oh, we're in a pandemic. Like, I'm just going to kind of chill back. Or did you still continue to do work? Um. So when when the pandemic like hit, I was still thankfully for a good period of time, I was doing product images. Mm-hmm. Live Nation mm-hmm. would send me like boxes of merch, and I I could do it at my house. I had mm-hmm. a little setup, um, and I think I did a few videos and actual like shoots, like um, lifestyle shoots. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But it it definitely got to a point where like they weren't sending me things anymore, mm-hmm. and then um, I kind of was in this very depressed mode because Mm. I was like I couldn't create content with my friends Mm. I couldn't like go outside and you know I lived at my by myself at the time so Mm. I was like scared of the outdoors yeah Yeah. um I actually remember like being in the fourth week being so depressed and it it was pouring I think I don't know if you guys remember but it was pouring for like a whole month (laughs) and it was so depressing we're from Seattle so no I was like so depressed because I was just like oh my God, I'm by myself. And I remember like, I have this little mirror or window outside my kitchen and nah. like, it's like right above my sink. And I was like drinking my coffee, just staring outside the window. I was like, it looks so depressing. The world is ending. Oh, like, um, and like the way I coped with it was I drew a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when I had- um, The doodles. My yeah. doodles, yeah. yeah. It was just my way of coping. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I think what I also really needed was a three month break mm-hmm. because I was, you know, I was going, I don't know, 500 miles per hour before quarantine. Mm -hmm. And I think me personally, I needed that. I needed a break to really like reset myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And it worked out, you know, like I I, I got to live my life and, you know, I met my boyfriend, which Mm -hmm. was really Mm -hmm. cool. Um, And I got to live a life and then now I'm like working again and I love my job. So everything worked out. Like I know I was depressed at the time, but. Mm -hmm. I'm okay now. No, that's good. Yeah. It it definitely hurt a lot of us, but I feel like, you know, especially when you try to still grind, it still gives you opportunities. Yeah. Because it gave me opportunities too, you know, like Mm -hmm. in us, it was like, of course, like for me, it was like moving to LA, my previous job, I had already been there for 12 years. So I kind of was trying to enjoy like 12 years. 12 years. I've never worked. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> no, same. That's that's what I'm same. saying. You know, so that's so what when I mean. he talks about dinosaurs, you know it's real. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, so it, this like, is a living uh, I, fossil. Yes. You hey, look like you. you've only worked two years. I and know. You're, I know. Yeah. Fuck you though. Yeah. I'm saying that. Fuck you for saying that. No, no, no but it's, it's a inside like, joke. He doesn't really look old. He nah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. He no, but yeah. honestly, like it, it's it's. I, I needed that time off. Yeah. yeah I think you know, like yeah, being because you know we came in the next year. Uh, so, you know, moving moving down here in 2019 mm-hmm. and then next year is like the pandemic. Yeah. We're all locked down. I was like, fuck, like this is kind of good. Mm-hmm. I've been working 12 years straight, you know, nine, like nine to five job. Like, this is amazing. I want to take the time off. Give me that fucking unemployment. Yeah. And the fact that they were giving like nice unemployment benefits and all that. I was like, 
this is kind of nice, oh, you know, nice. like, I, I can take a little time off, yeah. but, and then it just got to the point, too, where it was, like, you know, this is getting fucking boring, yeah. staying home, not really doing anything, right. like, trying to come up, of course, you know, I love creating content for myself, it's just, it's not enough, I'd rather be out in the world actually mm-hmm. doing work for somebody else, yeah. you know, and, you know, of course, finally, you know, leading into the job I have now, like, and it's amazing, and, you know, I feel like, it was just the constant work and applying because like if you don't apply for work during the pandemic you're not oh, yeah. gonna fucking get shit yeah right. you know and that was the thing and i was like you know what i i need to get another job you right. know i know my my job in the beginning wasn't necessarily essential but now it fucking is yeah. so I, for to me, your it, life for, yeah. me, it's for me it yeah. is it is for me it is so i was like you know start applying mm-hmm. and you know finally landed where i'm at now you know, um, so now you're at, you have an amazing job working mm. at one of the biggest like <laughs> apparel companies out yes, there, there, Fashion yes, there. Nova. Yeah. How did you actually land that position? <laughs> um, okay, so, you know, I think it's one of those things where I subconsciously manifested it. Mm. Um, and it, I, I, I tend to think about it it's kind of disgusting, but I just sit <laughs> on the toilet and I like okay. think about like, oh my god, my life has really like changed and mm-hmm. and you know like I've thought about that yeah. Yeah, on the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or like in the some, shower, yeah, in some the Filipino bathroom. toilet <laughs> brainstorm yeah. with the tabo. Why are you using the tabo? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it oh, happens. Man. It happens. Yeah, yeah. different breed. Yes, yeah. it happens. But but you know you know like I've I've done a lot of reflecting. Um, and it's crazy, like like I like I said, the the job after college, I worked for this jean company who mm. was a wholesale company, who would supply to Fashion Nova, okay. and you know as a graphic designer who, in school they don't teach mm-hmm. you how to do email marketing mm-hmm. or like homepage banners or like anything like that. They, they don't teach you how to do that, right. and so like it was very stressful. It was very hard for me. And I would look at things like Fashion Nova because I remember our CEO would be like, "We gotta look at like these brands mm-hmm. and like." Blah, blah. And I would look at Fashion Nova as like, "Oh my god, like I wanna like I wanna try to figure out how they design this, and mm-hmm. you know, like I wanna be like them." Yeah. Um, and. It, it was difficult for me, you know, like for me to replicate something or to get inspiration from other things. Mm-hmm. And and now I'm like, oh, it's so easy for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. But it was really interesting that, you know, I went through these almost two years of being so like, like self-conscious and like mm-hmm. stressed out. And then I remember being in the pandemic and like starting to apply. Like I took like three months break and then yeah. I started to apply. And I remember I applied to Fashion Nova twice. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I saw like their their um, job post was there for like I don't know maybe like a month long, mm-hmm. and I kept applying to it on LinkedIn. I was just like, mm, you know, like yeah. just send 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 yeah, yeah, send. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I finally got like an email back, and they're like, hey, like we would we would love to like talk to you. And then I don't know what it was, but I think within that instant, I was like, I, I get I could get this job. Like yeah. I remember telling my boyfriend, like I have this. Like mm. it's so easy. I can get this. Like they're gonna see my resume, and yeah. and I mean I don't necessarily know if it was my resume, but like right. I just felt it like in my body. Like mm-hmm. I really manifested. Like oh, I got this. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And then um, I I thankfully I'm I'm so uncomfortable with like in person like job interviews mm-hmm. and thankfully we got to do it over Skype so yeah. it was even easier okay um it was so cute I was dressed up up here but then wearing like short <laughs> PJ shorts mm-hmm. down here of course, that's yeah. How it is. yeah but um and I talked to my boss I interviewed with her and like she was so sweet I love her and I don't know we just really clicked and then I got put in a position of course all new jobs are stressful mm-hmm. but um one thing after another and you know, I am now in the position where I'm at now where like I'm designing like the main homepage banner. Like Fire. like anytime you guys see that, that's me. Fire. And you know, sure. like it's crazy yeah. because Can we give a round of applause for yeah. that? Yeah. Fashion Nova graphic <laughs> design <laughs> Fashion Nova. Thanks, you know, that's guys. that's a fire. Um, but it's pretty crazy because I went through I don't know what the timeline was, I'm just gonna say a number, like five years of, you know, being at a point where at the very beginning I was like, I'm never gonna be good enough to mm-hmm. be working at Fashion Nova. I'm I'm never going to be good enough to be able to get inspired or like have the skill to do what they're doing at the top mm. of their head. And, yeah. you know, now I'm like here and I'm like, oh, shit, look at that timeline. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so much can happen in like yeah. five years. Like, where am I going to go after that? Like, exactly. what are the, the next five years? Yeah. So it's, you know, like I 
I think I just went off on a tangent. I don't even know no, what you're, you're asking. No, you're good. We, we love tangents. Yeah. Yeah. No, we love tangents. And yeah. you know yeah. what? Like, honestly, I go back to what you were saying is mm-hmm. you kept applying for Fashion Nova. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I saw their videographer position. Yeah. And I, I, I applied for it. Yeah. And I think I only applied for it once. So it was like, of course, you know, it was like. I, I think they had viewed it or seen it on like um, Indeed or LinkedIn yeah. or whatever it was. Well, let me know now. Yeah. Oh. I can refer you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we got Sid here, please. You know, that would help a lot. No, but honestly, like it was during that point where, you know, before I got the job now where I'm at, it was like mm. I was applying for Fashion Nova quite a few. I think yeah. they had actually reached, somebody had actually reached out to me said, um, oh, you know, um, we love your work, blah, blah, blah. Um, can you send us this? I sent him it, but they never replied back. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. But yeah. the fact that you kind of kept... You, I kept going. You kept going. Yeah. You kept applying. You were yeah. like, you, check my shit out. Yeah, it, like, was, it was pretty funny because I remember after after hearing back from HR the second time, mm-hmm. um, I remember getting an email back after I had interviewed with my boss yeah. saying mm-hmm. like, oh, we actually saw you the first time, but we had closed the search, but then something reopened and mm-hmm. then we saw you applied again. Yeah. So they, oh. they're they looking, they yeah. see it, you know, yeah. and it's, it's something that you're really interested mm-hmm. in. It's just in any job, like keep going, keep yeah. moving forward because you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so. No, in fact, Nova hopeful. is big. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you getting thank that you, position because that, that definitely is a big job especially I think living here in LA because all we fucking see is like Fashion Nova ad, <laughs> yeah, ads everywhere, everywhere. Like, every influencer yeah. big influencer yeah. Yeah. Like, big influencers yeah. seeing him on like uh, you know the 5 and you know stuff like that or mm-hmm. the 10 or whatever yeah. it's like we always see it so it was like damn you know the fact that you landed a job you know working on their website or you know their ads and stuff that's mm-hmm. big so you know I'm proud of you Thank you know you. congrats yes, on landing that big ass job uh, yeah. Fashion Nova, you know, maybe Seth, uh, you know, Sid can recommend it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll hey. get that, that videographer <laughs> position. For sure. <laughs> if they need a photographer, you know, yeah. I'm actually in the process of like applying to other positions as well because I'm lo- trying to leave the medical field. That's yeah. That was the goal, like moving down there. Yeah. But of course, like the pandemic hit and everything. So we had to slow things down. But then now I'm at a point to where like, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to yeah. take that leap. So, yeah. yeah I, 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 I think, think you definitely, super, like, super you def- for you, it, it's like you need to find that. Because, I mean, of yeah, course, sure. you know, for me, I'm already in the, in the film industry working for the Oscars, the Academy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I'm definitely happy, you know, where I'm at already. It's mm-hmm. like, now it's your turn. I know. To fucking get out of what you came down here That's working with, yeah. you know, and now lead, leading into something that you mm-hmm. really want to pursue. So, I'll you know, we, we got it. I'll let you guys know. Hey, right, yeah, yeah. let us know. <laughs> let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, going back into your graphic design, like when I was in high school and college, a lot of people wanted to be a graphic designer. Um, that's like, was there like, if they didn't know what they wanted to do in the arts, they were like a graphic designer. They started doing flyers and ads and obviously they didn't stick with it, but that was like their entry level, like, mm-hmm passion uh for you like did that start out like a hobby and then you kind of like took it as a career or Mm -hmm. did did you like fall in love with it like right away um I think being in college I didn't really understand you know there's a difference between design and and art like Mm. that's a that's a difference and I learned that in college I didn't know that that was thing so with design it's like you know design is mainly marketing like you're creating something to help somebody to Mm -hmm. teach somebody something whereas art is like illustration you Mm -hmm. know you see someone's like emotion expression Mm -hmm. and all that stuff Um, and I think being as a communication major before design it was like okay like I don't really know what I want to do but maybe marketing Mm -hmm. is that what I love like I don't know it it going back to me manifesting something like I think Mm. because I kept telling myself oh I'm going to do marketing yeah like it became a thing for me whereas okay now I'm doing communication but now I'm doing design how can I put the two together um Uh and then I was like oh maybe you know like I love the fashion industry I was already seeing their like fire videos I was already seeing um you know like home pages and all that stuff and I think that was something that you know I was like oh I want it that's what I want to do and I remember getting my first job and saying like wow like after interviewing like but this is actually where I want to be you Mm -hmm. know this is marketing like this is what I love like I want to be able to do this and like like 
make somebody buy something you know like yeah, yeah that's dope i didn't yeah. know there was actual difference yeah there's a different, yeah, there's there's a difference yeah. between the two and oh, so wow. um i think that was the route for me like mm-hmm. all along yeah. and i you know I, I led myself in that direction yeah, that's and it really worked out for me yeah, so. that's, dope. yeah. that's where you are now yeah yeah um so going back into it like so you worked with a lot of companies and the biggest companies besides fashion nova and live nation i think you mentioned working for a smaller company uh doing jeans and stuff like that what other companies have you worked for um i've done a lot of freelance stuff you know Mm -hmm. there's this it's actually my friend my friend's like media company one down Mm. media it's a it's like a filipino type of media company yeah and i gotta support our filipinos out there yeah Yeah. Um, they've worked with a lot of cool people too Mm -hmm. um like artists and like dancers and writers Mm -hmm. like it's it's pretty cool but um I did some of their t-shirts like like I actually like designed I don't know one of their big ones they did something for like like I don't even remember what it's called but it's at like Filipino town that was and like it had what like a jeepney on the back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know it, it that was one of my favorite things that I ever did right. um and you know I got to, like I they let me do it in the style that you, you know to. that I wanted to yeah. which mm-hmm. was like LA like streetwear so. versus like you know I don't know yeah it whatever something they came up with yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you know like yeah. so so that was pretty cool um I've also worked for you know I've done video for um oh my gosh you guys I haven't done I don't remember <laughs> now. I, I feel You've like done too many yeah and I, yeah and I, f- I feel like you know so much has changed in like two years like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I don't really do as much freelance as I did before mm-hmm. right. um which is you know good and bad in a yeah. sense because i need i i need some time to myself mm-hmm. like Relax. i was just constantly Dude. working you know yep. um I, I do stuff for um there's this company called luxel it's another wholesale company mm-hmm. um brochures and stuff i don't mm-hmm. know I do, i'm dabbling in a lot yeah. of different yeah. things so oh, that's cool. yeah. yeah for sure like you mentioned like being a freelancer have you ever thought about like being a full-time freelancer besides like working for a company um I did. I, I yeah. was doing it for almost two years. So when I was working for Live Nation, I actually was an independent contractor. Oh, really? And yeah, my boss gave me the flexibility to, you know, if I had to do something for another person, just tell her like, oh, I'm not going to be available these days. Mm-hmm. But I really took on that role. Like I was already working there, which I think they liked. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And, I, you know, made some money. Hey, hey, that's hey, nice. Cool. Um, uh. um, and yeah, I... I, I I definitely want to go back to it okay. eventually. But eventually. right now, I'm, you know. Yeah, I know. I Make like it where I'm at right so it's okay. I'm not grind. Yeah, no. okay. but, but I think, like, in the future, when, you know, I want to start my own brand, I want to start my own situation, and right. I think, like, like I don't know if another pandemic happens or something. Like right. maybe I will work from home and take advantage of that because yeah. I'll be ready. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. So yeah, you also worked with like a lot of like apparel brands. You mentioned the Filipino company and also like small local ones like CrossFit, uh, Building Block, but and all the way to <laughs> Did like. Did you find big... my resume? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we do deep we, research. We, okay. I was like, wait, hold on. At this I point, we kind of know. I forgot I did yes, that. Yeah, yes. I'm dead. Yeah, and then um, now you work for a fashion over which is huge like and you have a really uh good fashion sense as well have you ever thought about making your own brand that's that's the goal oh really okay. that's the future that's the goal um you know i think i i kind of was trying to start it during the middle of the pandemic yeah. or like early on it's a great time too it, it really yeah. was but you know i didn't fall through i should have mm-hmm. but like i said i needed that break for myself mm-hmm. right. i needed to just chill mm-hmm. for a second and reset and to think about like what it is that i do like because sure. i was in this vibe where you know <laughs> I can hear you full on slurping that thing. Yeah, you got those fucking mangles like all attached wait, to my wait, skull. I need, I need a jam. Hold on, hold that's, on. That, that's you. That's a user error. You yeah. got the mangles all attached to my straw, so I can't even drink the liquid. No, you got to go around the mango, obviously. <laughs> Damn. That shit is good, though. Okay, yeah, back, to the convo. It's gone. back to the convo. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All I heard was. We're talking about your brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 clothing yeah. Clothing brand. Yeah, so I wanted to start a clothing brand. I told you guys that I was really um, influenced by like the skateboarding industry. Mm-hmm. So I actually started drawing on skateboards. I never posted anything yeah, okay. like on social media. And that's better that way, honestly. <laughs> I think so. I because, think so too. You know, because um, I also got 
in a point where I was just like, oh, it's like, will people even like this? Would mm-hmm, people? Is mm-hmm. this something people would buy? You know, and like you've seen my art, like mm-hmm. I, I don't know, it's not really something I would stick on a t-shirt. Yeah. Type of vibe. No, but like, your art is still think, amazing. Ah, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it is. But but I think it's it's I'm trying to understand for myself like. Okay, what type of you know artwork is good for this? What mm-hmm. type of artwork is good for this? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I, and being in the position that I'm in, like I'm learning a lot, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's always been a goal is to like be in a position where I'm learning like the back end stuff, like the actual creativity stuff, just so I can get an idea, and then then you know like when I'm ready, yeah. start moving forward. Which I think I'm in a place where like I do want to start that's researching yeah. Yeah. and doing yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend now we have so much in common and mm-hmm. right now he's like I want to design shoes and stuff yeah, like that and I'm like let's do it together that's <laughs> you know that's like, you yeah, like exactly. I want yes. somebody yeah but that's I think that's need. what I need is like somebody to you know some of that that we can do something together yeah, support course. each other exactly. and, and yeah. um, you know I think we keep talking about it mm, right. and it's kind of like okay if I keep manifesting yeah, it, it's, it's gonna, gonna happen yeah. it's gonna come we just gotta keep you know that's keep fire. going towards that yeah um yeah. Even if it's just a conversation, mm-hmm. you know, not even right. just like actually physically doing anything. Yeah. Like right. we're getting somewhere. Exactly. No, yeah. that's, that's goals. That's that is goals, you yeah. know. Like I mean that's almost like me and Rachel, you right. know. Like during the pandemic, we of course we were at a, a standstill where it was like, you know, let's fucking do something. Let's get creative, you know. So right. and she's a fashion designer. Yeah. So, you know You guys were doing masks, right? Yeah, we were doing yeah. masks yeah. and of course she was the one designing and making them. I would be like, Yeah, this shit is dope. Uh maybe add this one or add this one. And then I was doing like the social media kind of stuff, you know. So I think it's dope, especially when you have a significant other right. mm-hmm. where you can actually kind of work and he, you know he him also being creative mm-hmm. you guys can build on top yeah. of that creativity yeah you know right. so i mean even me and her we always talk a lot of a lot about like you know the next thing maybe uh creating a brand or you know outside of the whole mass thing right. and you know stuff like that so it's definitely dope and yeah. you know hopefully you guys do come come up with something we you will know? Yeah. we will yeah, putting I, it out there yeah, I, I, we will. Some shoes. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to see what you guys shoes, come up with clothing yeah. I don't yeah. know skateboards Ex- I don't know excited we'll to see something. what you guys come yeah. up with that's definitely yeah. goals you know all I have is me myself and I so <laughs> you know if anybody wants to like manifest into my DMs <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still here you know he is still got yeah. available guys yeah. so I'm positivity. looking for the same thing you yeah. know yeah, let's go <laughs> but no going back into uh, the field um, of your field I, you, you know your field is so heavily like like into your creativity you, like you you rely so much on that like do you ever have like a creative block and like mm-hmm. how do you like push through that when you yeah. know like there might be a deadline coming up yeah um, I think early on in my career I'd like to talk about this job that I had okay um, my job after college yeah, because yeah. that was a that was a big like learning curve for me mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. not just technical like technical skills or mm-hmm. anything like that it was a lot of mental things so mm-hmm. right. for me I struggled with a lot of like create creative blocks because mm-hmm. I was like so stressed out all the time mm-hmm. I was like oh my god like is this not good enough I doubted myself in my design mm-hmm. um and so I kind of had to get over this curve of like okay you just gotta you know like just remember like creativity is subjective you know everyone is gonna have their own input and if Mm -hmm. someone does have the input i can't take it to heart you know that's it's it's constructive criticism Mm -hmm. you know you just gotta take it and you gotta move forward yep Mm -hmm. and so for me to you know to get better as a designer i learned like do the job Mm -hmm. you know do the job as best as you can with it the right amount of time efficiency, you know, because you got to move forward. You can't Mm -hmm. linger. You can't get stuck and depressed. Um, So if you're in a creative block, just think like, okay, like, okay, got to get something and then move forward. If I have the time to come back to it, then we'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. But you got to keep moving. You can't, you know, you can't get stuck in this block, you know, exactly. Um, which is just, you know, like that will just put you in a deep ass big hole. It would. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. It's just and bad. I think we all we've all uh, experienced that as creatives, you know, yeah. yep. thinking about like the outside world and how they would perceive like what we make. But we also need to realize that what we make is original mm-hmm. and yeah. it's always going to be judged. And of somebody's course. always not going to like that. We're always going to have yeah. haters. But it's having that letting go of that fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And that's really going to push you forward. So I think you put it in like the, the greatest Ooh, way. Clap it up. 
Let's go. Let's go. Come and, on. You know, Sid, I like I said, you know, before we end the show, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Thanks but for having what, me. What is next is for you? We interrupt this episode with a word from our sponsor. Are you looking for a way to energize for the day? We got a product that will do just that. Introducing Gamer Subs. Gamer Subs is a keto-friendly, zero-calorie, zero-sugar-based energy drink that introduces nootropics to sharpen focus and increase reaction time. Gamer Subs is also organic caffeine base that will maximize energy and endurance. To make it easier, each scoop used is 100 milligrams so you don't go over your daily limit. Each tub of Gamer Subs contains 100 servings. Gamer Subs also provides caffeine-free tubs for those that just want their daily vitamin dose without the need for caffeine. Not only do they have energy drinks, they also have dope merch, such as these waifu cups, t-shirts, and hoodies, and much more. Are you ready to energize with Gamer Subs? Use our code Artist You Drop on their website and receive a 10% off discount. Hey, now back to the show. It's leveling up my creativity. Mm. I would really like to jump up a ladder mm-hmm. and, you know, like, right. I, I've kind of researched, like, okay, how do I get how do I get to a position where yeah. I'm an art director? Mm. You know, that's where I want to be. Yep. Um, and then, who knows? I don't know. Shit, we might have to bring you on set. We might have to. Whoa. Yeah, our yeah. director on set. Yeah, yeah. No, but you know what? We might have to bring you back for the podcast anyways. Right. Because I would love sure. to come back. We, we yeah. know you're going to rank up in your career, <laughs> so we got to check yeah. up on you and see where you're at, you know? Right. So, of course, you know, we appreciate, you know, all the tips you have given, uh, but for we sure. want to, you know, we need you to give some advice to the next upcoming graphic designer, photographer, and videographer. Like, what would you say to them you know, as they're coming up in their career? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is you hear that saying, fake it till you make it type mm-hmm. of thing. And that has such a negative connotation, but really it's just manifest. You really believe, like you actually have to like believe it in yourself mm-hmm. that you are this person for you to become that person. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. Like, like it's like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really sit in front of the mirror and say, I'm great mm-hmm. and I'm going to be great type mm-hmm. of thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, you have to really say like, okay, like I'm putting a little bit of time and effort, but now I am a photographer yeah. and that will make me become a better photographer. Mm-hmm. I'm a designer. That'll be make me become a better designer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of, you know, believe in yourself. Try not to be in that creative block that mm-hmm. will send you in a deep, dark hole of yeah. depression and sadness. And, yeah. you know, right. Oh, that's <laughs> a good tip. So that's yeah, a good but, you know, Just no, keep some, moving forward. Some good ass tips. Where can people find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram if you have a LinkedIn. I mean, if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, I don't know. <laughs> um, I post videos of my boyfriend on TikTok. But I know I should probably do other things, but yeah. as of right now, that's where you can find me. Hey, Let's and go. we're going to yeah. link everything in the description below. You Is know, it? we're going to link her Instagram, TikTok, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> we're really we're, evolve that. We're, yeah. okay. we're, we're gonna link all yeah. those. But uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, it's Artistry Drop. If you're not following us on Instagram, you can find us at the Artistry Drop. And if you prefer just listening, you can stream all our episodes on all major podcast platforms. And we will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.